In this video, we go over how to trace the tree traversal algorithms for pre-order, post-order and in-order and look at describing the use of tree traversal algorithms. This video covers how to traverse, add items to and remove items from the tree data structure. We introduced the concept of the tree data structure in a previous video. If you've not yet seen it, we suggest you watch the trees and binary video first. So we've already covered the various ways we can implement or create a binary tree. In addition, you need to be able to trace and write code that can traverse a binary tree. Although not mentioned in the specification, we'll also round out your knowledge by covering how to add an item and remove an item. You can achieve this by using either an array and procedural programming or an object oriented approach. The exam board recommends you gain a general understanding of these methods backed up by a practical experience implementing them, as opposed to trying to memorize any particular code pattern. We'll start by looking at how to add an item to a binary tree. Let's work through how we'd add a D to the binary tree shown here. First, check if there is free memory for a new node. It's important that you check a data structure is not full before you attempt to add an item. If it is, you should stop and report an error. Students often forget this step and lose an easy mark in the process. Now we're using an object oriented approach for this binary tree, so memory is much less of an issue because the data structure can grow and shrink dynamically. We now create a new node and insert the data into it. Our new node contains D, the item we want to add to the binary tree. Next, we need to check for a special case. If the binary tree is empty, the new node becomes the first node in the tree, also known as the root node. We would then create a start pointer to it and stop here. However, in this example, that is not the case, so we continue. Starting at the root node, we check if the item would be placed before or after the current node. It should be placed before, so we follow the left pointer. If it should be placed after, we'd follow the right pointer. We keep doing this until we reach a leaf node. So in this example, we start at the root. D is less than E, so we follow the left pointer. D is more than B, so we follow the right pointer we've reached a leaf node. All that is left to do now is work out if the item we want to add should go before or after the leaf node. D comes after C, so we set the right pointer of the leaf node, C, to point to the new node, D. D has been successfully added to the binary tree in the correct location. Next, let's look at how to remove an item from a binary tree. Let's work through how we would delete B from this binary tree and the implications of doing so. Now, it's not as straightforward as the other data structure operations we've been looking at. The first thing we need to do is obviously find the node we want to delete. We start at the root node and set it as the current node. We now check if we need to enter a while loop. While the current node exists, the current node E does exist and is not the one to be deleted. Well, the node to be deleted is B and not E, so we enter the while loop. We now set the previous node to the same as the current node. This line might seem a bit odd at first. We are at the root node, so there is no previous node. Effectively, we're just copying the contents of the current node into a temporary location, so we call the previous node. Why we do this will become clear later on. We now check if the item to be deleted, B, is less than or greater than the current node, E. If it's less, we follow the left pointer. If it's greater, we follow the right pointer. B is less than E, so we follow the left pointer. Next, we check if we need to enter the while loop. While the current node exists, the current node, B, does exist and is not the one to be deleted. However, it is the one to be deleted. So we've now found the item we want to delete from this binary tree. Assuming the node exists and has been found, there are three possibilities you need to consider when deleting a node from a binary tree. One, 
the node is a leaf node and has no children. Two, the node has one child. Or three, the node has two children. The situation where the node to be deleted is a leaf node is simple. We check if the node to be deleted, the current node, is less than or greater than the previous node. If it's less than, we set the previous node's left pointer to null. And if it's greater than, we set the right pointer to null. In this example, the node to be deleted is less than the previous node, so we would set the previous node's left pointer to null. That is why we needed to set this previous node value earlier on. The situation where the node has to be deleted has one child is also quite simple. We check if the node to be deleted, the current node, is less than or greater than the previous node. If it's less than, we set the previous node's left pointer to the current node's left child. If it's greater than, we set its right pointer to the current node's right child. In this example, the node to be deleted is less than the previous node, so we set the previous node's left pointer to point directly to node A. Again, we now see why we needed to set this previous node value earlier on. If the node to be deleted has two children, we can make use of the fact that the data in a binary tree can be represented in different ways. The binary trees shown here are the same. They both store the data E, F, G, H in order. One approach to deleting node G is to find the smallest value in the right subtree, the successor, and move it to the position occupied by G. The smallest value in the right subtree will always be the leftmost node in the right subtree. This approach is known as the Hibbard deletion algorithm. This is a special case. There is no left subtree from node H. So we move H into the position occupied by G. Notice how the tree has become what we call unbalanced. F could now be the root node with e to the left and h to the right. This example highlights how adding and deleting nodes over time can impact the efficiency of algorithms on binary trees. Going back to our example, the node to be deleted b has two children. So using the Hibbard deletion algorithm, we first check if a right node exists, it does c, and it has a left subtree, it does not, it's a leaf node. The node to be deleted doesn't meet both of these conditions, so we skip this section. Again, we check the conditions. If a right node exists, it does C, and it has a subtree, it does not. The node to be deleted matches both of these conditions, so we'll execute the next two lines of code. We set the current node to be the node found at the current node's right pointer. In other words, we replace node B with node C, effectively promoting C. Finally, we set the current node's right pointer to null, indicating a vacant space in the binary tree for a new node where C used to be. Here is the structured English from the previous example. We start by finding the node to be deleted. Then we do one of three things, all dependent on whether the node to be deleted is a leaf node, has one child, or has two child nodes. Now you might be wondering whether there's a simpler way to delete an item from a binary tree. And as with all algorithms, there are alternative approaches. It simply depends on how you structure the actual algorithm when you implement it as a programmer. A simple alternative is to introduce another attribute to each node that flags when a node is deleted. These deleted nodes are then skipped when we traverse the tree. Although this would vastly simplify the previous pseudocode, it would also increase space complexity over time as nodes are added and deleted. Eventually, we could end up with over half the nodes in our binary tree being flagged as deleted Clearly not an efficient solution. At some point, we'd need to make a decision to recreate the binary tree. Finally, we'll look at how to traverse through a binary tree 
outputting the contents as we go. There are three different binary tree traversal methods that you need to be aware of. Pre order, in order, and post order. The data contained in a binary tree will be output quite differently depending on which traversal method you choose. So it's important to understand how they differ and when you might want to use one over another. Pre order traversal is a variation of a depth for search used to create a copy of a binary tree or to return prefix expressions in Polish notation, which can then be used by programming language interpreters to evaluate syntax. Now note here that with pre-order traversal, we put the little green markers on the left side of each node. The algorithm can be described as a node left right traversal. We start at the root node, Output the node, follow the left pointer and repeat from step two recursively until there's no pointer to follow, follow the right pointer and repeat from step two recursively until there is no pointer to follow. Doing this, we write out each node as we pass the green marker and we get E, B, A, C, G, F, H. And you can illustrate this in your exam by demonstrating your understanding of the algorithm by following around in pencil and marking when you're outputting each node. With an in-order traversal, we put those little green markers at the bottom. So in-order traversal is a variation of depth vert search used to output the contents of a binary tree in order. And one of the significant advantages of this method is that it automatically sorts the contents of the structure without moving the data, irrespective of the order in which the data arrived. This negates the need for an insertion sort. The algorithm is described as a left node right traversal. We start at the root. We follow the left pointer and repeat from step two recursively until there's no pointer to follow. We output the node. We follow the right pointer and repeat from step two recursively until there's no pointer to follow. This would give us the output A, B, C, E, F, G, H. To output these nodes in reverse order, you simply reverse the algorithm by following the right pointers before outputting the node and then following the left pointers. And finally, we have post order traversal. So here, note that we put the little green markers on the right hand side of each node. A post order traversal is a variation of a depth first search used to delete a binary tree. It's also useful to output what we call post fix expressions which can be used to evaluate mathematical expressions without the need for brackets. And this is how arithmetic logic units work in stack machine computers and was used in pocket calculators until the early 2010. The algorithm is described as left right node. We start at the root node, follow the left pointer and repeat from step two recursively until there's no pointer to follow, follow the right pointer and repeat from step two recursively until there's no points to follow, and then output the node. Here is a nice simple summary showing you the three traversal methods, where to place the markers, and the output given by each. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How do you add a data item to a binary tree? How do you remove a data item from a binary tree? How do you traverse a binary tree using the following? Pre order traversal, post order traversal, and in order traversal. Dave and I know that data structures and algorithms are one of the hardest areas of the course. And we've therefore written a dedicated book, which is available to purchase on Amazon. The book covers all the data structures and algorithms you need to be aware of for the exam. Each one has its own dedicated chapter. The chapter overviews the data structure or algorithm, gives you applications, operations, links to our videos online, and goes over the algorithm in simple structured English, a visualization, pseudocode, and is fully coded in Python, C Sharp, and Visual Basic. Music